The other day, I was putting my socks away when I found a note someone had left for me. Yes, Total War Warhammer 3 is coming to PC Game Pass and of course Game Pass Ultimate on day one. I am a major fan of the Warhammer Fantasy universe. In fact, every night you can find me either painting models for the tabletop war game or playing Total War Warhammer 2, much to the annoyance of my wife. Total War Warhammer 3 has something in it for everyone. Whether you're an old fan like me who wants to live out our nerdiest desires in the grand strategy sandbox experience, or you're someone who's new to the world who wants a unique playthrough in a truly immersive fleshed out universe. For me, this is the most exciting game to come to the PC Game Pass library so far. And if you have a look through that catalogue, that is a bold statement because there are some absolute bangers included. Even better though, it is coming on day one. Now that is all well and good, but what is Total War Warhammer 3? Well, in short, it is a turn-based grand strategy game with real-time battles which takes place in the Warhammer fantasy universe. The grand strategy element lets you take control of settlements, heroes and armies while engaging in diplomacy, trade and warfare with other factions. On the battlefield, you take control of a lord and their army, plus any reinforcing elements nearby. You can then proceed to rain artillery fire down on your foes, engage them in a brutal melee, pepper them with fire from your skirmishes, and trample them underneath waves of cavalry and monsters. The choice is yours. <sighs> Damn, that's uh, making me want to play it, just talking about it. Now let's take a look at what's new in the game. And I think we have to start off by looking at the factions that have been introduced. First up, we have reinforcements to the Forces of Chaos, the grand antagonists of the Warhammer Fantasy work. They have received some much needed reinforcements in the shape of the Daemons of Chaos. Each Chaos God has its own unique set of troops, lords and monsters to better reflect what they represent. The choice is yours on what direction you want to go down. When playing as the Daemons of Chaos, you really have four sub-factions to choose from. You can choose to fight for Sench, the Changer of Ways. His Daemons have a heavy focus on magic and ranged attacks. But maybe you want your forces to have more of a speed element to them. In that case, Slanish, the Prince of Excess, is the Chaos God for you. His forces focus on speed and hitting hard. They are the quintessential glass cannon. Maybe you just want some badass guys and girls to get stuck in up close with the enemy. In that case, Korn the Blood God is for you. His forces have a high melee focus. All he wants them to do is to claim blood and skulls for the skull throne. And now for my personal favourite, Nurgle the Father of Plagues. He blesses his minions with the gift of contagion, making them the physical embodiment of an immovable object. Engage your foes in a war of attrition that they have no hope of winning. Warhammer 3 has also seen the introduction of a faction that was not really represented in the Warhammer tabletop game, Grand Café. Grand Café is a faction that takes heavy inspiration from historical China. They are situated in the far east of the Warhammer world, and just like the nations of humans, elves and dwarves in the west, they are constantly beset upon by the forces of chaos. Unlike the nations to the west, however, Grand Café has been protected for generations by the Great Bastion. This is a massive wall that absolutely dwarfs its real-world counterpart, the Great Wall of China. However, the protection of the Great Bastion is at an end. The forces of chaos are on Grand Café's doorstep and pouring into the nation proper. The forces of Grand Café focus on complementary warfare. They have equal parts melee to ranged, infantry to cavalry, they even have flying airships. 
If you've ever wanted to fight with giant terracotta warriors, then the forces of Grand Cafe are for you. Separating Grand Cafe from the rest of the Warhammer world are the Mountains of Morn, home to the Ogre Kingdoms. Ogres worship a deity called the Great Moor, which displaced them from their original homeland. That's right, they worship a giant mouth which ate where they used to live. Naturally, they are obsessed with food. They fight for food, get paid in food, see their pets as extra wiggly food, they even worship by eating. In fact, the only armour which is commonly worn by all ogres is a gut plate, and that is purely a means to protect their continued ability to eat. Playing as the Ogre Kingdoms means you're going to be bringing a lot of big dudes to the fight. You'll be frequently outnumbered, but you'll more than make up for it with the mass of your troops. For a race obsessed with food, there's a lot more depth to the Ogre Kingdoms than initially meets the eye. Ogres travel far and wide as mercenaries, hiring themselves out to other factions. So you'll see the odd pirate or ninja spread out amongst your troops. There are giant stone horns which are ridden by ogre hunters, ogres who have gone insane from not eating called gorges, and even ogres who spit out fire called fire bellies. Finally, Kislev. Another faction that did not feature heavily in the Warhammer tabletop game, but which has really been fleshed out in Total War Warhammer 3. Kislev is heavily influenced by historical Eastern Europe, which means they have winged lances and bear cavalry. That's right, the people of Kislev breed bears so that they can then go and ride them into battle. Even their faction leader, Serena Katarin, can ride a giant war bear into battle, while summoning her frost magic to decimate the enemy. And they kind of need it, because unlike Grand Cafe, they do not have a great bastion. They are the first line of defense in an unending war against chaos, and now you get to decide their fate. Those are the new factions, but what else has been introduced? Well, there's been a lot of quality of life gameplay features added, like being able to more easily see troops in heavily wooded areas. A whole new region, of course, has been added to the map, and there's been major reworks to siege battles. Now when you fight siege battles, you'll notice that the map itself is a lot bigger. There's also multiple layers to the city itself, meaning you can garrison archers on a bridge and rain fire down on the enemy below. You even get points to build barriers and obstacles, even towers, in the city streets to add layers to your defense. For the first time in Total War Warhammer 3, you will be able to take the fight to the Realm of Chaos itself. A major part of entering this realm will be Survival Battles, a brand new battle mode that will be introduced. Survival Battles see the attacker trying to capture different strategic locations on a map. As they capture these strategic locations, they will be attacked by waves of enemies. Luckily, the more locations you have, the more points you accumulate over time. You can spend these points on new units to reinforce your army, upgrades to units, or even building defensive locations, obstacles, and towers. Okay, I think I've nerded out enough, but there is still one thing that I'd like to address, and that's why this game in particular is going to be awesome on PC Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. First of all, let's talk about where this game is going to hit us. That's right, in the pockets. I'm talking about money. Where I'm from, in Little World New Zealand, Total War Warhammer 3 is going to cost me $99.99 new. Whereas PC Game Pass cost me $12.95, meaning I could get 7 months of PC Game Pass for the cost of Total War Warhammer 3. So rather than buy the game outright, I'm going to stick with my PC Game Pass subscription. That way, I can save my hard earned cash to spend on DLCs. Because anyone who's played the Total War Warhammer series up to now will know that their DLC is amazing. You get new factions, new legendary lords, and new units, which add up to hours and hours of extra gameplay. If PC Game Pass is sounding pretty good to you, make sure you sign up. You're going to be able to pre-install Total War Warhammer 3 so you can play it as soon as it launches.